Welcome back to our Altium Placing Parts Tutorial Part 2. Okay, we're going to start play, uh, moving our parts around a little bit, changing our parts, changing values, wiring our parts together. Let me show you how to do some of these things. Um, we have our parts numbered R1, R2, R3, and R4, but we'll notice that they all say 1K. Uh, we can change that, and let me show you how to change it. I'm going to double click my part here. and I'll see my parameters and my properties of this part right here it says comment resistor 1 that's the library name and it says visible I don't want to see that anymore so I'm going to click it make it invisible value I want to change to 10k and then I tell it OK and there I have R2 10k let's change our other resistors while we're at it don't want that visible I might make this one 50k our little op amp here this one I'm going to make a 50 ohm output impedance I chose 50 ohms so it can drive a coaxial cable and the characteristic impedance of my cable will be 50 ohms alright and R4 I want to match my other input resistor I'll make it 10k I don't want that visible there now look all my resistors have values I can move my individual comments or values around just put my mouse over that part press the left mouse button down and leave it down move that value see I can move it anywhere I want very good let me save my data now I'll show you another thing we need to do obviously just like P spice we have to wire our nets together and what's very important in Altium is how we wire our nets together I'm gonna to zoom in a little bit here and you'll see there's a little plus symbol here so at the end of each connection on my parts is a little plus symbol that plus symbol is the net connection that's the only place I can wire to so let's come up to our toolbar up here I'm going to hover over the little squiggly lines that says place wire. That's how we wire our parts together. I'll click, and you'll see that my mouse pointer now has a crosshair, a gray crosshair with a small gray crosshair in the center. As I move my crosshair over the part where the net connection is, the small crosshair turns red. That tells me, yes, you can make a connection here. If I put it over here, doesn't turn red, no connection. What can be confusing is if I happen to wire this up like this. It looks good, but guess what? No connection there. So let me delete that because I can't make a connection here. So let's come here and connect. Look, I got a red X in the middle right on top of my net connection. Let's move right across that makes a good connection so now I'm going to wire up my circuit here I'm just making a basic op amp circuit that will give me a gain of 5 inverting I'm doing that quickly because you'll be able to do this yourself no problem when I'm done wiring, it's just like when I'm done placing parts, right click, my wire tool goes away. So what do I have now at 10K input, 50K feedback, 50 ohm output, I have my other resistor here on the input of my non-inverting input to keep the current balances the same. And what am I missing? Well, I'm missing a few things here, right? I don't have a complete circuit yet. I don't have power on my power pins. I have no connectors to get my parts in and out. So let's look about how we're going to add power. If we come to our top here again where it says VCC, I have a VCC power port. I'm going to show you some tricks we can use that we could have used when we placed the resistors. I'm going to left click on this and it says VCC. That's a common name for power. I'm going to hit my tab key before I place my part and there's the property of my net it says VCC I'm gonna change the name to 
plus 12 volts DC, VDC, and they're all uppercase. Now, one thing about Altium is case sensitive. If I place this same net again later and I make them lowercase, it won't be the same net. Altium will look at it and say, look, the cases are different. Some are uppercase, some are lowercase. I'm making two separate nets. They won't be connected. And I'll show you what I do to avoid making those simple mistakes. I'm going to say, OK. There's my little red X. No problem. I'm going to come up here now and place an extra one. I'm going to use this later when I put my connector in. Now I'm going to hit my tab key again because you see that the, the little power port is still connected to my mouse and I'm going to edit this one to make it say minus 12 volts DC. I'll rotate it, put it here, and instead of placing another one here I'm going to hit my escape key and say, oh look I forgot to place it, right? I have plus 12 volts DC and I have a net up here that I'll be able to hook up to a connector. I have minus 12 volts DC. Ooh, I forgot to place it. What am I going to do? Well, I can come up here, right, and hit the tab and change it again. I might make a mistake. I might make a lower case. So here's the easiest thing to do. I'm going to highlight my part down here. Look at it. I'll zoom in a little bit. I got a little box around it. I've highlighted it. I'm going to do control C. I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to do a control V to paste it. And now that I've copied and pasted my net, I can't make a mistake. It's the same spelling because I copied that net. I'll place it there. Up here you'll see also ground. That's my ground power port. I can place that. Now if I hit tab in there you'll see it has a properties with a name G and D. Eventually you might want an analog ground, a digital ground. I can come up here and change what it looks like. Signal ground, earth ground. You can change what it looks like. I'm going to go back to power ground. And I'll leave the name ground. That's fine for what we're doing here. I'm going to place one here that I'll use on my connector. Well, let's see, I'm going to need one for my input connector when I have signal coming in. I'll need one for my output connector for my signal going out. And I'll put one right here, bottom of my resistor. Let's save. Zoom to fit. Very good. Now I have a circuit that has plus 12, minus 12, grounds. All I'm missing is my connectors at this point. So let's go to our libraries. When I look at libraries, I have been pulling parts out of miscellaneous devices library. Let's click here and say I want miscellaneous connectors. I'll open that up. I'm going to shrink these little windows down a little bit so we can have the windows of interest a little bit larger. This way I can see more parts in my library. Now, B and C connector. Here's the schematic symbol. Here's the physical layout or the footprint. Now the B and C connector is the connector you see on the front of your oscilloscope when you plug in your probe. It's the little round connector. You push it in and turn it about 40 degrees and it locks in place. That's a B and C connector. This is a schematic symbol. Down here is our footprint. Here's the little round part where your connector actually goes on. So we'll use that. I like B and C connectors. It'll be handy for us here. So we're going to come up just like we did on other schematic parts. Place B and C. And there it is. And now what are my options here again? Same thing. I can hit tab before I place it and say, yeah, I want that to be visible. And I'm going to call it INPUT input. Very nice. And I'll place it right here. We'll adjust that later. Now, I'll rotate my part, put this over here, hit my tab key, and I'll name it Output. Okay, there's my part. I right click to stop placing. Let me see, I'll put my ground up here. I'm going to move my comment name. 
put my ground there. Now if I put a box around all of them, you see how I drew that box? I put my mouse up here, hold my left mouse button down, draw a box around everything. I can move everything at once. If I don't put a box around it, it'll move just the single part. And I see that these two are not connected. I need to connect those and I need to get a connector for my power ports. So let's take a look. Oh, I notice this is a little ugly. My ground is facing up over here. My ground is facing down over there. Electrically that works fine, but I'm thinking about this. This is my artwork. I want it to look nice. That's a reflection of who I am as an engineer. So let's see, what can we do about that? I'm going to double click my part here, open the properties, and look down here on the bottom. There's a box that says graphical and mirrored. So if I mirror my part, it's just like looking in the mirror in the morning, the left and right sides switch. I'll tell it OK. I mirrored it. Let me rotate it now. Much nicer. Now look, I mirrored my part. I can connect straight across with my ground on the bottom. These two are not connected. I need to connect those. So I have an option. I can put my wire on there but let's do it a different way just so you can see some more options. Up here I have a place net label. I'm going to click on that. You'll see that this little box appears. I'm going to hit tab. Uh, currently it says input. That's what I used the last time, but it may say output. It may say something else. I'm going to call it input again. I-N-P-U-T. Input. I'm na naming my net input. I'll put that right here. See the little red X again? I put my net label on the connection. And I'll put it here. It's on the connection. Now that this node and this node have the same net name, they're electrically connected. That saves me from putting a wire across. Sometimes in your schematics, if you have too many wires, it can get confusing. Makes it a little harder to read. Let's place one more connector and then we'll update. See, I have red squiggly lines. Al team is warning me. This is P question mark and this is P question mark. I need to change those. So back to my libraries. And you'll see if I just page down through my connectors, you see here's a schematic and here's a footprint. You see all these different connectors. That's right, there's a lot of parts. D connectors, edge connectors. Here's one that says header two. Header pins are like you saw on your boards. Maybe in 3701 you have these little male gold colored header pins that stick straight up out of the board. They're pa uh, placed about a tenth of an inch apart. That's what you see here. The schematic symbol shows two connections on the PCB. What our footprint is physically going to look like. Two holes. So at that point I can put two pins in there. They come in different sizes. There's a four pin header, four holes. You'll notice that when I look at my two pin header or a three pin header, there's a schematic symbol, there's the three holes, there's also a three H. Now the difference is, and we'll look at this one, here's my three connections on my schematic, here's the three holes in the board where I'm going to solder my parts, but you'll see that I have this drawing here. The reason the drawing is there is unlike the standard header three, the header three H, the pins come out they, they go up vertically a little bit and then they turn 90 degrees and go horizontal. So you'll see that there's a space drawn on my board to show how those pins will come up and bend over. Let's use the horizontal placing, right, the header three. I'm going to tell it place. I'm going to hit my tab key. I don't want it to say header three H. I want it to say power. That's where my power is coming in. I can rotate it, come up here, place my part by left clicking. I'm going to right click or hit escape to stop placing parts. Move my little comment. I can now place my power pins on here. Place the ground on there. I'll save it. Another red squiggly. What's the red squiggly warning me about? I need to go to Tools, Annotate Schematics Quietly, 
update my schematics. My red squigglies are gone. I'll save. And now look what I have. Plus 12 volts, minus 12 volts ground. My power connector. Right here I have my net label to connect those two together. I basically have all my inputs and outputs. I have my parts laid here. We're looking pretty good. I think at this point I'm going to stop this video. The next section we're going to look at, we're going to talk about bypass capacitors.